Welcome to The Real News Network. I'm Dharna Noor, joining you from Baltimore. Thousands of public school teachers went on strikes across nine Washington state school districts on Wednesday. These single-day strikes are part of a protest against the new state budget proposal. The teachers, who are members of a union called the Washington Education Association, are demanding smaller class sizes, better compensation, and less testing. Teachers of other districts are set to strike this Friday. Joining us from Seattle to discuss these strikes is Jesse Hagopian. Jesse teaches history and is also the Black Student Union advisor at Garfield High School, where, he, uh, where teachers just voted to join the strike. And Jesse is an associate editor of the acclaimed magazine Rethinking Schools. He's also a founding member of Social Equality Educators. He blogs at imaneducator.com and is the editor of More Than a Score, The New Uprising Against High Stakes Testing. Jesse, thank you so much for joining us today. Oh, it's a pleasure to be here, and especially to talk about this uh, this new uprising for justice in, in, for education in our state. Uh, so, Jesse, among the critics of these strikes are the state Republicans, uh, the editorial board of the Seattle Times. They're among those who support the proposed $1.3 billion budget that will be provided with no additional taxation. And uh, according to Republican Representative Chad Magandans, these would be the highest share of the budget spent on education in the last 30 years. So why are the teachers rejecting this proposal? Well, because we stand on the side of what's lawful. And in fact, the state Supreme Court has ruled in the McCleary decision in Washington state that our state legislature is failing their constitutional duty to support and fully fund education as it states in our state Supreme Court and, and our state constitution. Uh, ed education is the paramount duty of the state. And this state has failed uh, to fully provide for adequate funding for, for our schools. You know, the state only actually funds five periods a day, but we have six. The state has cut transportation spending, and we've seen these cutbacks year in and year out, whether it's mass layoffs or it's what happened at my son's school this year where we did not have enough money for the counselor. And so the school principal decided they were going to have to cut spending on all of the school supplies and teachers would no longer have access to paper uh, or, or pencils or the basic supply in the school so that we could keep our school counselor a vital component of our school that provides for the social and emotional well-being of our, our students. And these are the tough choices that school districts around the state have had to make for too long. And what we're saying is follow the direction, follow the court order. Uh, that the Supreme Court ha has declared. And in fact, the legislature has shown that they're willfully uh, neglecting the, the law. And the Supreme Court had to go farther and say that the legislature is in contempt of court. And so we're saying um, what we are doing in this one day rolling strike around Washington state is actually upholding the law. The radical action is the one being taken by lawless legislature, le legislators actually in both parties uh, who are refusing to fully fund education. Another one of the issues raised by the striking teachers and empathizers is testing. Uh, they claim that testing is excessive and detrimental to learning, but you know proponents of testing say it's an important way to check if teachers are making progress with their students. Are teachers just trying to avoid accountability? Absolutely not. There are some state legislators who have said that they will only increase funding for our public schools if teachers submit to having our, our evaluations linked to test scores. And in fact, that is not what the Supreme Court has mandated. The Supreme Court has mandated fully fund education and fully fund it now. And that's what teachers are standing up for. And, and we reject this corporate education reform narrative being pushed by what I call the testocracy, um, which is made up of multi-billion dollar testing companies uh, and other elites um, who say that in order to have proper accountability, uh, we have to reduce education to the ability to eliminate wrong answer choices. And we as educators reject 
uh, that that false narrative. And we know that actually these tests are narrowing the curriculum. These tests are uh, reducing the intellectual process of uh, teaching and learning to a single number that they then use to punish our schools. They use to to deny kids graduation. They use uh, to to tie teacher pay and evaluation to, or they use to label schools failing so that they can shut them down like they have in Chicago and Philadelphia with scores of schools being closed, and that these test scores really have nothing to do with, with supporting uh, public education, and that uh, we know that the voters here in Washington State just passed Initiative 1351, which calls for lowering class size, because parents know that that would be one of the most important reforms to implement in the public schools so that the students receive the individual attention that they deserve. And the state legislature is willfully neglecting the democratic uh, view of the state of Washington and our voters uh, and saying we are going to refuse to fully fund the 1351 and reduce class size. And instead, we're going to move towards uh, scientifically unsound and pedagogically flawed uh, high-stakes standardized testing. And I'm proud to say that our state is currently uh, in the largest uprising against these kinds of tests in U.S. history. So it's not just teachers uh, refusing these tests. We, we see 180,000 parents in New York State alone refusing these tests. In my own city of Seattle, I'm proud to say that we have more parents opting their kids out of these detrimental exams than have ever happened in Seattle's history. At my own high school, so many parents uh, refused to let their students take the new Common Core test that the the test actually wa was n is no longer being administered by the teachers and just individual students are being pulled out to take it. So um, I think that the, the corporate reformers have pushed this, this high stakes testing for too long and now parents, students and teachers are joining together to redefine uh, uh, assessment and to fight for authentic forms of assessment. And uh, so switching gears a little bit, um, you spoke to some of the hard choices that parents and teachers have had to make. Uh, I'm wondering if there isn't enough money in the budget for increased pay or more jobs or better facilities, then doesn't this mean that teachers necessarily have to work with less if they want more to be spent on students? Well, I think teachers have rejected that, uh, that false dichotomy. Um, teachers at Lakewood who went out uh, on a one-day strike first and, and, you know, at my high school we just voted that we were in favor of joining this strike and votes are being taken across Seattle and soon I think our our uh, district is also going to join in this strike because we know that we live in one of the richest regions in the history of the world. We have Amazon, we have Boeing, we have Microsoft, we have Starbucks, we have more wealth in this area than any place ever, anywhere on the planet. There is plenty of money. It's a question of priorities. I went down with a group of people from the Social Equality Educators uh, into the House Ways and Means Committee meeting where they were getting ready to cut $2 billion from the state health care and education budget. And we actually staged a citizen's arrest. We said, it's not just that we know that this is morally wrong. It actually goes against our state constitution. And, and you have to come up and find the money. And we actually read out the constitution on the, the floor of the House Ways and Means Committee. I issued out uh, citizens' arrest warrants to those legislators. Uh, and unfortunately, the officer didn't agree with my interpretation of the law, and he uh, arrested me. And I spent the evening in jail, but my students at at Garfield High School saw, the, saw this on the news and took it upon themselves to independently organize a, a mass walkout of Garfield High School. Uh, and they pointed out that the lack of funding has meant that there aren't summer school programs for students at, 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 in the Seattle schools so that when kids fall behind in credits, they have no way to make them up. 
They pointed out that science and, and uh, language services have been cut so that there's no longer four years offered. Uh, and, and they detailed what these cuts have done, and they marched to City Hall with this demand. A and I think we should stand with these courageous students and teachers around uh, the state who are saying, you need to find the money in one of the world's richest regions. And people should know that Washington state is one of the few states left in the entire nation that does not have a state income tax. And that would be one of the quickest ways to solve this problem. Have a progressive income tax where you basically only tax millionaires and that would raise the funds in the snap of a fingers to provide the education that all of our students deserve. So could you speak a little bit more to that? Um, could you describe a little bit more of a budget that would be in the benefit, uh, in the best interest of teachers and students? Absolutely. You know, the McCleary decision issued by the state Supreme Court mandates that our legislature add many billions of dollars to the education budget. And I don't believe that that money should be taken out of the other vital services that our state provides, uh, whether it's health care or it's higher education. I think that there's plenty of money in this state um, to provide for all the basic needs of our citizenry uh, and, and all the people that live in Washington state. And I think what that would look like uh, is implementing a progressive income tax or at very minimum, bare first step, closing the tax loopholes that exist in our state. You know, of course we have a sales tax in our state, but the sales tax doesn't apply to private jets. So if you buy a, a piece of candy at the store, you're going to pay sales tax. But if you buy a private jet, right, uh, then you're exempt. And it's about a basic fairness in, in our state, a basic tax fairness that would allow uh, for, for the full operating of our schools. In Seattle, the school district uh, cut funding to every single elementary school counselor. And at the same time, in our, our city and, and county is getting ready to build a new youth jail for $200 million. So we see that the priorities of our uh, region have put the building of a youth prison and the slashing of, of education funding. Uh, and, and basically what is going on is the construction of a school to prison pipeline where kids lack the support services, the counseling services they need to nurture them uh, to be successful in school, um, to overcome problems they face uh, maybe outside of school. Uh, and then they ready uh, the, the jail bed facilities uh, for these kids. And I think those priorities are exactly backwards. We need to flood the schools with the resources uh, that they deserve. And I would suggest that the corporate education reformers, people like Bill Gates that live here, would do far better to pay income tax and let the state use that money to help all the schools rather than using their private foundations to push unproven uh, high stakes testing regimes. And you know, Bill Gates sends his kids to Lakeside. And I think that tells a lot about what his values are. You know, he graduated from Lakeside, his kids go to this wonderful elite private school. And what do they value in education there? They value small class sizes, right? Uh, a 1 to 14 uh, ratio with, with um, teacher able to give individual attention. They value critical thinking in the classroom over high stakes testing. In fact, they don't use the Common Core curriculum and they don't use the Common Core uh, assessments and tests, right? They value uh, the arts, they have amazing performing arts and visual arts programs and study abroad opportunities and a library with tens of thousands of volumes. And we believe that what's good enough for Bill Gates's kid is good enough for all of our children in Washington State. And it's time that the super rich began paying their fair share of taxes in this state so that everybody uh, can thrive. Well, Jesse, thank you so much for joining us, and we'll certainly be keeping our eyes on Seattle in the weeks to come. Oh, I appreciate you having me on the show. Thank you very much. I look forward to this collective uprising. And thank you for joining us on The Real News Network.